Well, chapter 7 continues, Israel was designed to share God with the world. I showed you that they were part of the evangelist. The final super evangelism event takes place. Look what it says in verse 9 of, uh, oh, I've got to get to Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9. After these things, after the deployment of this great, mul- of the evangelist, a great multitude which no one could number, Revelation 7, 9, of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne. And the angels fell down and worshiped. And there's another big sevenfold. I told you another one. Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever. And, and John said, um, verse 14, sir, now he's talking to one of the elders. You know, and he said, sir, uh, so he said to me, who, who are these? And he said, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. They are before the throne. These are the converts of the 144,000. This is the, the greatest, the final super evangelism event. Most likely, it says in, in chapter 6, that they're the ones that are beheaded. And in chapter 14, it talks about them again. Probably, as they're being led to Christ, they're being killed by the Antichrist. I mean, you talk about an amazing event that people on the spot are willing to come to Christ. But as it says in that great uh, worship song, salvation is of the Lord, and the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Well, people get saved after the rapture in huge numbers. You can see it right there. And, and God, look at verse 15, um, it says, Therefore they are before the throne and serve him day and night in his temple, and they shall neither, verse 16, hunger anymore, thirst anymore. Verse 17, the lamb is in the midst, is going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. He's going to shepherd them forever. God is with us forever. And so chapter 7 is just like this glowing beacon. And then we get to chapter 8. And this is where the bad stuff starts. And it's so interesting that chapter 7 is wedged between all the horrors of chapter 6 and all the horrors of chapter 8. But even in chapter 8, look how it starts. When he opened the seventh seal, this is the last seal, there was silence in heaven for a half an hour. I was once with my family in Mammoth Caves in Kentucky. The ranger, park ranger, said, everybody sit down, we're going to turn the lights out for 15 seconds. We're 150 feet underground with chasms all around us, so we all sit and hold our kids tight. The ranger turned off every light. Five seconds, people are going like this to get their watches to glow because they were feeling so awful in the dark in absolute silence. You could hear people uncomfortably going. (coughs) Being quiet in the dark for five seconds is hard. God gives a half hour of total silence. What what is this for? God wants people to repent. And before he starts pouring out the wrath, he's given them time to listen to these 144,000. Jesus is so patient. And and what we're going to see here in chapter 8 is how Jesus responds to our prayers. Remember I told you he puts them in that bowl? Number one, Jesus is patient. That's the 30 minutes. God's plan is inescapable. Um, It says that in verse 1, for about a half an hour, but when the half hour is up, boom, it starts hitting. The birth pangs get stronger and wider. Look at verse 2. And I saw seven angels who stand before them were given the seven trumpets. What's happening is during this half hour, it's totally quiet, but seven angels kind of walk up to the edge of heaven. Remember, the picture of this is the throne of God, the glassy sea, and earth is beneath it. These seven angels come up here and they start getting ready with their trumpets and they're going to start sounding the trumpets one after another. But before they do, look what verse 3 says. It says, And another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. The altar? Yeah. There, there is in heaven these, these structures that Moses saw to replicate in the tabernacle and later in the temple. 
There's a heavenly copy and an earthly copy. This is, we're seeing the altar. There's one of those in heaven. And look what it says. And he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar before the throne. And the prayers of the saints, the smoke of the incense, ascend before God, verse 4, from the angel's hand. And then they took the censer filled with fire and threw it to the earth. This whole section is saying God is listening to all the prayers. They're coming to that bowl in front of his altar. The angel scoops them out, and then God is going to throw them, and we're going to see that. That's the judgments. 